the CDC guidelines on masks is putting frontline workers and especially people of color at risk and that they're, they're calling for the CDC to reverse that. What's the White House's stance on that union in particular saying that their, their members and people of color are at risk? Well, I would say we don't have any particular response to, directly to the union. So, dude, do you, do you see that thing down there? And we saw this little white tic-tac looking object and it's just kind of moving above the whitewater area. As Dietrich circled above, Fravor went in for a closer look. So you're sort of spiraling down? Yep. The tic tac still pointing north south, it goes and just turns abruptly and starts mirroring me. So as I'm coming down, it starts coming up. Microsoft founder Bill Gates facing misconduct accusations for a relationship he had with a Microsoft engineer starting in 2000. That's according to the Wall Street Journal. The paper found that his March 2020 resignation from the tech company's board of directors followed an investigation into the affair by an outside law firm hired by the board. Oh my goodness. Who really had it in him? Right? Yeah, you never really heard this stuff about Gates before, but now there's like this flood of information. His, Bill, come on. Am I on? Um, I heard you on the thing earlier, but... Check. That's me, right? It's moving. I mean, I assume it's coming out. I seem louder than you, though. I wonder what's going on here. Should we redo it? Hello? No, no, we're fine. Okay. Check one, two. Check one, two. Check one, two. Maybe you should check it's not coming out of my mic, that my mic's not catching you. It's my little mic right there. Okay. I wonder if there was fidgeting by a child. There could have been a fidgeting by a child. It happens in here. Um, but anyway, I'm, like, blown away by sort of just this flood of information about Bill Gates that's now coming in. Because you never heard about him, like, having affairs or living this huge party life. At least I didn't. No. But apparently he was having all kinds of affairs. He was... I mean, this was known that this thing was weird where he was... It's, he it's had, all kinds of affairs? Well, he was having... Supposedly, people are saying he was pursuing people romantically, both at Microsoft and at the Bill Gates the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. It's been known for a while that he sort of had this weird thing where he spent one week a year or one weekend a year or whatever. Reading and doing his, um, yeah. He'd no, bring with, a bunch of books with him. Uh, to go be with his ex, though. Really? Yeah, no. He would go be with his ex for like a week at this beach house. They would that like rent a house smart. with yeah. an ex for like a week. Um, there's the Epstein thing, which apparently, you know, Melinda Gates had had a problem with since like 2013. How close I he was to Epstein? I don't see why. Epstein. You know, it's what's wrong with a private island with a guy. You with know, she crazy, didn't like crazy, creepy teeth. <laughs> a uh, fixer groomer as a pseudo girlfriend mm. in an island full of underage uh, trafficked girls. Yeah, so they're copping right now. They're copping to one affair, but the New York Times is reporting that he had, he was, you know, trying to hook up with people from both the foundation and Billy from Microsoft. B. And then, Billy G, I guess. Yeah, wow. Who knew? And then also, I mean... I wouldn't have thought. In 1995, Alice, I mm -hmm. want to know. 1995, I actually opened the car door for Bill Gates working really? at a hotel in Cambridge. Hmm. At that... And, and uh, yes, and all those geeky, freaking Microsoft sycophants in the tan pants and blue T-shirts, blue button-down shirts... Uh, ran over to get the door mm -hmm. for him. I'm like, I'm like, man, I'm the doorman. I'm 22 years old. Right. I'm a doorman. I'm not exactly, you know, a a rock star in the social life area here. All I get to do is open the door, and you freaking geeks took that from me. But in that, in 1995, Alice, I ha had a. You just turned them off again. I did. You turned them on and then oh, off. Oh dang! Oh, did. In 1995, um, Alice, okay. I actually, I actually, um. Uh, was possibly less than faithful than the young lady I was seeing at that time hmm. from Somerville. And actually, she said it, uh, wow, never knew you had it in you. Hmm. Who knew? So that's it. That's why that's dedicated to her. That's for you, Nancy. This one goes out to you. So, um, but you wouldn't think, if Bill Gates is stepping out, then it's just a billionaire's thing that you, that you, but he's. But not but, just but, stepping out because if Melinda Gates, you would think she knows him fairly well at this point, right? Like they were married for a while, and right. uh, it's and she was letting him go stay with his ex, you know, once once a year, which is weird. But well, I, but you know that what? shows that they had some level of like trust or understanding or whatever. But apparently, if she's been <laughs> disturbed enough by his relationship with Epstein for eight years now, I mean, that's um. That's like concerning, as in 
you're wondering what's there because she's close to him. And if she's disturbed by that, you know, she's a, it's not just the cheating, apparently, because she was like letting that go on, basically. But, you know, whatever was going on with Epstein. And I'm also interested because Bill Gates features so heavily in, you know, conspiracy theory world with, um, you right, know, the all vaccine this, like, stuff and then all and sorts the Great of things, Reset yeah. stuff. He's been working on this project to blot out the sun. Have you heard this? Oh, to Jesus. stop global warming. I probably thought it was a joke. They want no, but they, I thought it was a joke too. But they really want to do it to like blow a bunch of chalk dust into the air. They're going to start to do some experiments on a small scale. To How see could if it they possibly go wrong? It, you know, like my so, God. <laughs> so he features with that, like jerk. so the vaccine and like blotting out the sun and uh, all this stuff. The, He's got all kinds of plans here. And then, so that's like one strike. And then the relationship with Epstein, obviously that's uh, not good news for conspiracy theory land. So I wonder, like, it's interesting that now he's being sort of pilloried in the press. Like, he's getting totally knocked out of whatever this scheme is because nobody's going to trust him again. He's now getting, like, destroyed in the media. So I don't know. I'm interested to see where this goes, kind of, because... You know, I would think that if he were going to be the centerpiece of your huge agenda to uh, destroy humanity and start over with a master race or whatever they think he wants to do, the Great Reset, and build back better, that um, that you would need him around and, like, not have his reputation totally in the mud. But he's had to, like, quit Microsoft now and... That's He's crazy, doing... just for being a dog. It's so crazy that these guys just Well, can't... maybe they knew more than what's in the media right now about Well, it. maybe also that this guy is, although he's like whatever, 60-whatever, and back then, you know, he when he was 35 and 40 mm -hmm. years old, and he had reached his first billion, and he was only exploding in wealth and prominence, you give some nerd who's lived only, you know, on Skittles and Diet Pepsi <laughs> and standing, standing up overnight coding and was closer to probably trying to uh, invent his own AI woman than actually ever attain one. Mm -hmm. But you give these unsocialized nerds total access then when with the billions. The, and, uh, I, mean, I mean, this guy's – he's so – if he's trying to blot out the sun, <laughs> then there is a, a like power complex there, and that's why in my generation, uh, up until the, like the early nineties, we were very cruel to nerds. <laughs> it's true. You're saying and you the, think it needs to come back? A little bit needs to come back. Yes. I mean, I just wonder, like, what is it with our society that we idolize these people? Who, I mean, they're very successful people, but it's like through a combination of. Obviously, smarts, hard work, good instincts, and like a healthy dose of good luck and being around the right people, too, because you don't get that successful purely just right. on your own. There has to be some fortuitous circumstances around you, too. So, you know, I wonder what it is why people like worship them. Like, why do people what do you think mean? like if you, you understand? But the, like, worship the, them to the point to the where energy. we're like, yeah, sure. Bill Gates I is just, really smart. If I, he says we should blot out the sun, we should totally but, do it. That's brilliant. And like Elon Musk with his Mars. Who's going to not worship them? First coins. of all, who's going to not worship them? Mm -hmm. The sales department in every company, every media organization is saying we don't torpedo this guy. Get him on the show. When he's pitched, you know that the shows are saying, you know, the salespeople probably want this to happen, whatever. The guy's tossing around billions. Is You know what happens when a powerful guy, a billionaire, walks into a room. I just told you about my hotel, all the little geeks who ran, ran out to see him. <laughs> and I was very interested. I was, I was very surprised by his whole demeanor. He was – the only thing that blew me away is that he was kind of thick and tall, hmm. which is not – Yeah, he, he, he seems tall just – he is tall. His personality He's... seems small. Right. And he, he, but but no, totally. And it's he there was a great line by um who's the guy um Kissinger, Henry Kissinger, mm -hmm. who says uh having power is um essentially he said having a power is telling a bad joke and having the crowd blame themselves for not getting it. Hmm. So in other words, you're so persuasive. Yeah. He couldn't. It must have been funny. It comes from the mouth of this man, you know? So, no, I see that. But but what, I, what bothers me as a man... But he's not, like, even with the COVID What's our phone number, stuff, Alice, here? We should have call-ins here. I think technically we do have a Google voice number set up because we needed a phone Let's number. For I want to hear from guys. So here's the other thing. Is okay. What's but... disappointing to me, mm -hmm. and this is just... Um, 
this is just on the um what's it called the elements of a crime um the elements of a crime yeah on the elements of the crime thank you Alice. i, <laughs> I don't I wasn't know what you're it. talking about um forensics okay just on the forensics what gets me is this mm-hmm and this is what's this is worrisome to me. And I, this is what bothers me most about. The, I don't care if he has a thousand affairs. Like good, good luck. Mm-hmm. I mean, you but, care if they're like on Epstein's island with the trafficked children or whatever. Do I right? care? I don't want kids to be trafficked, but I don't care where he's going if he's a <laughs> pervert. Then somebody throw him in jail. I don't, I don't. But here's my thing: this, he was dating women, some engineers, mm-hmm. and then he he'd go after some women who work, like you said, for the charity, etc. Right. Know, who have jobs, probably college educated, probably paid well people. I mean, these are people mm-hmm. around him. So he's right. going for, that's not who you have an affair with if you're him. You should know where are the people around him who know this, who know how to take care of this. He's got billions of dollars worth of lawyers and personal assistants, etc., you know, uh handlers around him. Mm-hmm. Who's not setting him up into the right pipeline here? Like the situation from Jersey Shore would know where to get him women. <laughs> you know, the right kind who know the deal. You don't have an affair with the engineer who works down the hall. What, are you trying to fall in love here? That's not what this is about. It, 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 and it, it create a problem for yourself, which is exactly what he did. And the people at the charity. It's so, st- I don't get this. Like, men, I'm actually, you know what? Bill Clinton also. He just didn't matter. If you walked into the room and he thought you were hot, you were, his paws were on you. Where, you know, there are people... Right, you could be like the, you know, the president of a foreign country. And if he was interested, that you was oh, just absolutely. all about it. Oh, absolutely. You could go in there sobbing because your husband uh, was ruined and committed suicide. And he, all he saw was the, the thermal vision of your form, your body. I mean, but, and but I'm not sure that's Bill Gates' deal exactly. Well, no, no, he, I don't. I'm saying he's predatory, like mm-hmm. Clinton. But, but there is a thing about having affairs. Like the Kennedy guys got girls for Kennedy, JFK. Right. You know, Teddy, of course, was more of an idiot about it. Was, was mm-hmm. grabbing waitresses, which is why he was never president. Um. Well, yeah, and his uh, impaired driving, but certainly, uh, it, but I just don't. I do not get it. You know, you hear about the Rat Pack. Mm-hmm. And the Rat Pack had they they enjoyed time with many women, and many women enjoyed time with the Rat Pack, and they seemed to have a system. You hear about um, the rock, the, the bands of the eighties, you know, in nineties or whatever. Me too is I, probably I, messing with that system. A I don't bit know, but because... I, but I remember that. that uh, remember the band Sugar Ray? Mm-hmm. Uh, all around the world, and with yeah. the guy who was on um, what's his name? He was on like yeah, I know Access who you Hollywood. Mean. Not He's well, something. Well, Mick something was his last name, maybe. Right, so with the with the white hair, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Mike, a friend of mine, an unnamed okay. friend, were at a, at a concert when we were in said? our early twenties, and mm-hmm. and the band was playing, and there were two identical twin blonde women girls in front of us uh, who were very beautiful, and um, they were standout beautiful and identical twins, you know. Oh, okay. Right, and so the band's playing, you know, on whatever. This dude with 180 different uh, what are those mm-hmm. things called lanyards shows up. Talks to the girls, shouts something to them. He comes, shouts something to them, and then those girls went away. They went to the world of backstage, mm-hmm. where I'm sure everybody had a great time. Mark McGrath. That's Mark McGrath. Okay, name. so I don't know what happened or whatever, but 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 you know, there's a system. You mm-hmm. know, the rock and roll people get it. You know, there's a way to to. to mm-hmm. I just don't understand. It's the forensics of the way men act like that. I don't understand. If when I get my first trillion dollars and I begin my <laughs> advent, venture of of um of affairs with um with a perfect 10 models alice okay i'm gonna have to i don't have believe it or not i mean you know how good looking i am but i do not have a lot of model phone numbers in my rolodex mm-hmm. but you know you find a guy who knows that stuff and <laughs> is that how that works i would not i don't know. know either alice i don't okay. know and also uh, yeah I, whatever i'm probably gonna need your help <laughs> but you know what we'll put a pin in that for now so so what kind of trouble is this guy in? And why are these kids only getting $10 million each? Because they want them to, like, be self-sufficient. <laughs> uh, they don't want them to, you know, rest on their la- laurels. Yeah, well, I mean, what do you think about that? I mean, I don't think that's a terrible idea. I guess. 
I I guess. I mean, it has... I don't think it's going to come up for me, so I'm not worried. What about do you it. mean? <laughs> My scenario with the supermodels means that. Is there going to be money would... left over from that? I don't know. I want to be important oh. enough for the board to remove me from something else. That's all I want in life. <laughs> the Burn Barrel Productions board is going to yes. vote you off. Okay. All right. Anything else to say on Bill Gates? I'm all set with Bill Gates. By the way, we've got a uh, baseball game today. No, a softball game softball and a game. baseball practice. Baseball practice, 5 p.m., softball game at 6 p.m. Right now it is 4.18 Eastern time, so um, this is probably going to be a tighter one today. But we've got some stuff to talk about. Some new and interesting um, ground to cover for the burn barrel else. Really? Mm -hmm. What do you mean, really? You know that. You heard the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, we talked about the monolith. Yeah, we did talk about the monolith. It was a you and George thing. Okay. Hold on, Alice. All right. Let's get to let's get to some of the um, <laughs> political housekeeping out okay. of the way. <clears throat> The CDC, uh, we talked about, I wrote about that in my Substack today. Read that. That's Rachel, Rochelle Walensky. That's fine. She's all done. Yep. Shortly. Free on the done. Substack. Uh, but it doesn't matter because there are leaders, local and municipal leaders around the country, who some of whom are going to ignore the guidance, mm -hmm. some of whom regret, resent the Biden's the guidance, but will do it, and some who are hedging, including psychotic. Yeah. By the way, now. Uh, speaking of our baseball and softball games mm -hmm. today, did you see what Baker did today? No. All youth sports, technically starting tomorrow, but I don't know what the scientific difference is between today and tomorrow. All youth sports that are outdoors are now mask-free. Mm. I think I think we go a day early. I think we go a day early, too. I'm for it. Yep. So, uh, Lori Lightfoot, it, uh, the psychotic mayor of Chicago, which is, is sucks for Chicago because it's maybe the best city in the country. Uh, she's not ready to let go. Should people in Chicago w wear masks or not? Well, I think we've got to get some clarification from the CDC. Um, the rollout, obviously, as the reporting has been, was a bit abrupt. Um, and I think they've got a lot of clarification that they need to do. Um, I know for me personally, I'm going to continue to wear a mask in public, and I'm going to encourage others to do so. Um, we've got to make sure. What do you mean? She said... Walensky said, you don't have to wear the mask anymore if you've been vaccinated outside or inside. What more do you want to hear? What more? What, no, no. tell us more reasons we need to wear the mask, please, mm -hmm. Rochelle. Please give us more reasons. What more clarification do we freaking need? Well, at this point, at some point, and I don't want to hear the clarification. At, at mm -hmm. this point, at some point, Lori Lightfoot needs to act like the mayor now <laughs> and reassume control of the city. Right, you tell know, people it's okay. I mean, you notice she went, though, from saying... She said, well, the rollout has been, and then she corrected herself, the reporting has been, like, it's this is, like, some mistake that the press made. Right. By, it, that they've, like, confused the message from the CDC so that there has to be some explanation for what's, what's being reported is that the CDC said this strange thing, as though Rochelle Walensky wasn't all over TV the entire weekend clarifying exactly what she meant, which is that you don't have to wear a mask if you're vaccinated. And the president of the United States didn't get up at a podium and say that on friday you know we're acting like this is she's act sorry she's acting as though this is something that like you know new york times is has an anonymous source that says potentially the cdc says it's safe to not wear a mask right and it's <laughs> one point uh Walensky said we're not saying that you blow the whole thing open and and uh, get rid of all the masks and so people are running with that mm -hmm. you know cdc says don't throw all the way Okay, we understand what you guys want, but it, it, it is craziness. Uh, that people are continuing to follow the public health guidance that has gotten us this far, and masks, I think, are a big and important part of that. To say You're a sick bastard <laughs> if you think the public health guidance has gotten us this far. <laughs> Wrong. The vaccine has gotten us this well, far. Well, you're a religious nut. You've decided right. that masks are the magical force that controls whether the virus happens, and... In spite of all the evidence to the contrary, you know, you're not looking at what's in front of you. You're just blindly believing that masks magically keep the virus away when there may be a tiny bit effective and the vaccine actually is effective. So, right. you know, if, if you... Have right. How come there's no doubt when it comes to the with the masks? Oh, that absolutely works. The vaccine? Eh, I'm not sure. 
So when it's exactly the opposite right. is the case, is that the vaccine absolutely has been clinically tested in morons. trials, and we know it prevents you from getting COVID, yeah. whereas a mask, like, maybe has some tiny this effect. Is an, you know, think, this, is another, like, this is another wave motion gun moment <laughs> where... And the aliens say to me from Collect Torsic, say to me, Tom, um, we're watching, we're basing everything we do on that right now. Why shouldn't we destroy hey, you? Well, if you're if you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. That's great. But what about all the other people that are out there that aren't vaccinated? At that point, I'd have to say, you know what? Fire and ready. <laughs> let her rip. Just let me break out the Jack Daniels here for a moment before I become uh, departicalized. Vaccinated. And there's no way to know that. So I think for the time being. There's no way to know that. There's no way to know who's who is and isn't vaccinated in the crowd. We have to know things that are re- re- largely irrelevant. If you don't know all the things, all whether or not they're relevant to the situation or health, then no, we have to slow yeah. down. Or I else- mean, how do you know when you're driving on the highway? How do you know that all the other people have a driver's license? Yeah, I don't how, know. How do you know? know? How do they just let you merge onto the on ramp if if without checking that before you get on because how would you know how can you know that everybody there has a driver's license how can you know when you go to the store that people don't have the flu or the or chicken pox or whatever else i mean like there's all i mean you, you at some point you have to just function in reality without knowing all the information about what everybody around you is doing so i should offer that talk about last night at the soccer practice softball softball practice christ sorry uh, we got there and uh and i talked to one of the parents saying i i don't know why we're still wearing, wearing the mask so we'll see and i talked to a coach and said hey, why i don't know why we're still wearing the mask and he said well you know i feel it's fair that if we ask them to wear one then we should wear one to which case i was summoning the people from collector six again <laughs> to uh destroy the plan but that's that's fine it, but eventually what the coach did read the guidance saying Saying, uh, saying that that they said that that you wouldn't have to wear it if you were batting or fielding. Which, okay, right. so that's what percent of a softball game would you say is either batting or fielding? That's a probably a majority of the games so that's happening. There is nobody not doing one of those things <laughs> generally during the game. I mean, they're I mean, sitting in the dugout, I, mean, I guess, a little bit. Some of them, right? I guess so. So but, maybe that's it. So anyway. So, uh, and one of the girls didn't have her mask, and she uh, kept falling off, and then she was joking around with it, 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 putting it over her actual infielder's mask so that the kids can't get hit by a softball, <laughs> which is another thing. Um, and then, and so they, a couple of them started to not wear it while they were fielding, and then 11 minutes later, no kid or parent had a mask on. And it was so interesting. Talk about um, gradually, then suddenly. It yeah. reminded me of the, of, the, of, the, of the Iron Curtain falling. In Europe, mm-hmm. you know, it happened a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and then you know, in there goes the Berlin Wall, and then, and then four, three years later, gone. the Soviet Union's gone. You're like, what the hell happened? Jeez, what? <laughs> right. So that's what's happening there, and mm-hmm. I hopefully, it, I mean, it should happen everywhere. Well, now at this Most point, people- where Bakers said this now that youth sports kids don't eat masks at youth sports outside right. i don't see why anybody would right why have one more day of torturing your kid today's kind of a hot day like one more yeah. day of this crap it's watching these you know 10 year old girls having to fix their masks while they're running mm-hmm. to first base fidgeting around hoping that the pitcher like you don't have to take a time out for every girl to feel on the spot while they're fixing their masks she's you're right and then of course the the uh mm-hmm. the boys team that's gonna right. be rock and roll time and then may 29th um, all the mask mandates are gone except public transportation and hospitals and schools, obviously, because of course, why would we, why would we unmask the children? But uh, yeah, so but everywhere else, all the mask mandates will be lifted the end of this month for, uh, is this Labor which Day? I'm not Memorial going to, Day? which I don't. I think we should have enough self respect to not be thankful for that. No, I'm no, not. no, I'm taking mine off now. This, these mandates and what mm-hmm. was imposed. And these things, small things like shutting down the playground down the street from us oh, yeah. to duct taping places like that. As far as I'm concerned, but while the same people were telling us how important it was that people get out there and demonstrate for social justice because mm-hmm. racism is a public health issue. As far as I concern, I'm concerned, um, the score ain't settled. Yeah. And I will find my way between myself mm-hmm. And my friend Gary, who we've talked about, 
I will find my way to enjoy bathe, lather, marinate in retribution one way or another. Well, a lot of these people are elected, too. Um, you know, the people making the on-the-ground on decisions of what to do. Obviously, it's more involved to affect, like, a governor's race, which tends to be partisan and all this stuff. But a lot of the interpretation of the guidance is happening in your town and in your community. And these are people that are elected. I mean, I didn't check in our town how many people voted in our last town election, but there was, like, one thing that was contested, and we only have, like, 3,000 voters. So right. not that many. That's a race that you can actually impact. Our board of health is three people and they're all elected and that's who assigns the health agent and that's the one individual who makes all these decisions. So if you can knock... We don't want to wipe them all out, Alice. Mr. Toast can, is in there somewhere, isn't he? He's not on the board of health, though. Okay. But... Um, board of health has to go. But yeah, but the people that are making the, these stupid decisions are usually elected in a race with like 5 to 10% voter turnout. If you and 100 of your friends get together and vote them out, then they're gone. And then you can put somebody else in there who's going to be more responsive and make decisions better next time. Because there's always going to be something. There's always going to be a next time. It's, so, you know, it's worth it. And people don't think about these stupid little local races. Like, you don't even know what a board of health does. Does, I assume. No. But they close parks. I <laughs> yeah, they close parks. But they do a lot more stuff that impacts your life than, for example, anyone in Washington, D.C. does. So stop worrying about whether or not. What other things does my board of health do? Um, they approve our septic system. Oh, okay. They, um, they tell us whether we can have like restaurants and stuff. Really? They do that. Yeah, they do all like restaurant inspections and make sure things are safe, like mm -hmm. to serve food. And they're the people who shut down restaurants if they're I don't rats mind a filthy whatever. restaurant. But, um, you know, they, they control whether the snack shack at the games is open or closed. There's all kinds of rules around that. They inspect it. They inspect septic systems. I'm not sure exactly what other kinds of stuff they do in, in West Newberry, but I'm looking into it, and I'm going to see if I can find Ooh, somebody who's Alice. qualified to run next time. Possibly Alice Shad. I don't know if I want to be on the Board of Health. Board of health. I don't know if I want to be on the I Board of Health. I want total control over the snack shack, I don't know Alice. If I want I... the master key to that baby. <laughs> so I don't know if I want to be on the Board of Health, but I think that people should think about these races and, you know, in their background and expertise, right. what you're qualified to do. Alice, okay. yeah, well, let's give the people the uh, okay. well, crack that they want are going to continue to wear masks um, outside and outside of their homes and I think that's smart but when we're remember she went out last year to get a haircut because <laughs> even though that was did. against her that stuff and she also went out and celebrated of course she marched with I'm the sure rioters was a really she good celebrated haircut. when Biden won of course was out mm -hmm. in the street remember she said that the few people felt really really um, emotional so well there you go you know yeah. the virus stops for that so that was Lori Lightfoot. Uh, back at the White House, a non-elected uh, member of a recipient of taxpayer money, Yamiche Alcindor, asked the important question to Jen Psaki. Can I ask you, I want to also switch to COVID. Um, the largest national nurses union is saying that the CDC guidelines on masks is putting frontline workers, and especially people of color, at risk and that they're, they're calling for the CDC to reverse that. What's the White House's stance on that union in particular saying that their they're members and people of color are at risk? Well, I would say we don't have any particular response to, directly to the union. I will say that again, uh, the objective right about, of the about, CDC... About, about. Thank you for asking that on behalf of the union, Yamiche. <laughs> Thank goodness you ask another question about a black, um, a, a black subject. So, Ugh, so God. Not Monotonous. Where, so... Not wearing masks or not mandating that everyone wear masks is not only anti-worker and anti-union, but it's also racist. Yes. It's racist not to mandate that people wear masks, whether they want to or not, whether they're vaccinated or not. Yes. Oh. The I hadn't put that together, but, you know, since I guess everything's pretty much racist, I guess that makes sense. This is what all I would say to you guys. This is the last four words of this statement. This is this is all the mask guidance that you need. The rule is very simple. Get vaccinated or wear a mask until you do. Ready? It's coming. Okay. It's vaccinated or masked. Vaxed or masked. That's all you need to do to know. Vaxed or masked. Is he even aware of what words he's reading off the thing? No, Alice. You think he knows that there was a coronavirus? 
Um, yeah. Okay. So uh, let's pivot, Albie, mm-hmm. which is what I lovingly call you, to let people know. <laughs> onto... What is that? I'm pivoting. <laughs> it's not unattractive, Alice. For, uh, it might be okay. somewhat amusing. For those of you who are watching the video, I don't think you'll see that. Maybe you will. Okay, so 60 Minutes either promoted or played an entire segment yesterday on something that's very interesting. These, there's, They talked to two um, pilots, n- mm-hmm. Navy pilots, from 2004. Now, four pilots were witness to this thing altogether, but these two pilots witnessed something out off of uh, near their aircraft carrier while up in the air Okay, um, that has credibility. Mm-hmm. So let me play this, and we'll. That's take... amazing that you're saying that, since you don't. Whoa, whoa, been, whoa, like... whoa! I'm not saying that they're from space, Alice. <laughs> well, no, but um, you're. It's amazing that you're saying it has credibility because you're. I mean, like you don't believe that there were dinosaurs or that, like the Earth well, was I, round. No, no, I don't believe there were dinosaurs as shown us. I don't think that the that the uh, T Rexes, the tiny paws go with the rest of the body, and I think that the people who, um, you know, take little brushes to excavation sites probably know that they screwed that one up but they have to go with it i have been in the going to the museum of science now for 40 years 30 years whatever the pterodactyl used to be bald now has fur so you know this is there's a that science too is is evolving so no mm-hmm. I, don't, I, have, I have no faith that there were anything more than the animals we have now mm-hmm. you know po- possibly the woolly mammoth which is an elephant with hair let's be honest <laughs> it is uh, well, have, and that you know, coexisted with humans. That matches. That's like the end of the last ice age. So we have like more fossil ice age, evidence huh? for that. You know, ab- absolutely happened. Ice age. How did people cross the Bering Strait to come to the Americas? They were in Pangaea. They hang on to Pangaea. <laughs> no, that was way before. All the puzzle pieces fit together. Have you seen that was Amer- way Africa? Before and, uh, that was way before. That was not that. way before anything. Yes. Nobody came across anything. All right, here's 60 Minutes. This is the account of these... Um, it, Navy flyers. It was November 2004, and the USS Nimitz Carrier Strike Group was training about 100 miles southwest of San Diego. For a week, the advanced new radar on a nearby ship, the USS Princeton, had detected what operators called multiple anomalous aerial vehicles over the horizon, descending 80,000 feet in less than a second. On November 14th, Fravor and Dietrich, each with a weapon system officer in the back seat, were diverted to investigate. They found an area of roiling white water the size of a 737. So hold on. 80,000 feet in a second is pretty damned fast. Yes. Right? Yes. So because uh, 80,000 feet is um, multi- lots of miles, it's... So what? There's like five thousand two hundred eighty feet in a mile. Mm-hmm. So that's like sixteen miles. That's fast. <laughs> that's really fast. So I the water's say. roiling. So there's mm-hmm. uh, the white water, and they see these things over the water in an otherwise calm blue sea. So as we're looking at this, <laughs> her backseater says, "Hey, skipper, do you?" And about that, got out. I said, "Dude, do you do you see that thing down there?" And we saw this little white, tic-tac looking object. And it's just kind of moving above the whitewater area. As Dietrich circled above, Fravor went in for a closer look. Sort of spiraling down? The tic-tac's still pointing north-south. It goes, and just turns abruptly and starts mirroring me. So as I'm coming down, it starts coming up. So it's, it's mimicking your moves. Yeah, it was aware we were there. He said it was about the size of his F-18, with no markings, no wings, no exhaust plume. That separates the men from the boys, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. The moment you realize that the 80,000 feet in one second thing notices you're there and is reacting <laughs> to what you're doing, jeez, I would have been uh, pedal to the metal out of there, back to base camp. Mm-hmm. I'll see how close I can get. So I go like this, and it's climbing still. And when it gets right in front of me, it just disappears. 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 Like gone. It had sped off. What are you thinking? (laughs) That's so fast we couldn't see it that fast. Sped off is not a fast enough term for what this thing did. So your your mind tries to make sense of it. I'm going to categorize this as maybe a helicopter or (laughs) maybe a drone. And when it disappeared, I mean, it was just... Did your backseaters see this too? Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was four of us 
in the airplanes, literally watching this thing for roughly about five minutes. Seconds later, the Princeton reacquired the target, 60 miles away. Another crew managed to briefly lock onto it with a targeting camera before it zipped off again. So that is interesting stuff. Mm-hmm. To me, I don't think I'd quite heard that. Maybe I heard this little pieces here, but you throw this stuff away a lot of times. When right. It I mean, your... there's a lot of these stories of um, Navy pilots. A lot of times it's Navy pilots seeing these things that do stuff that we don't have any technology that can do that. And, you know, a lot of times, unfortunately, they're alone. So you're able to write it off as like, you know, they dozed off and were imagining things or whatever. I don't know. But... Um, you know, the fact that this was seen by four people and they caught it on a camera briefly, uh, that's that's hard to deny. I have to say, I've believed that these stories happen as people describe them for quite a while because there's just too many of them and they're all kind of similar. These things that like appear and disappear that seem to move very quickly. And what's more, I mean, like people have been talking about seeing and they describe them in different ways, but some kind of for supernatural mm-hmm. forces that are out there that they can't explain with their current laws of physics and whatever. It's since ancient times, people Alice, have been seeing be, this stuff. Let's be so, constructive mm-hmm. and critical. So I'm not trying to like go ancient aliens, right? Mm-hmm. But, you know, I, I tend to doubt, and I know that this is the line that like the Chinese have developed some technology that can do this. I just don't think so. I think it's something else that we can't right. explain. I mean, whatever that is. Certainly, so, pe- I think that there's too many stories like this and people see too much stuff like this. It's inexplicable. It's only like in very recent times that we've totally said like nothing exists that we can't explain and like proceeded as though, you know, like everybody who sees something that they can't explain must be crazy because there's definitely stuff, tons of stuff out there that we can't explain. Whether right, it's... which is why mm-hmm. I come to the book I just read called Hard Truth, Ellis. Okay. Which is why I'm come, coming to a hard truth here. Mm-hmm. So I am not a trained Navy fighter pilot. Right. Ellis. But. Or any kind, really. But, trained or Well, untrained. not fully. There's a gray area in there. But mm-hmm. it, I think it is fair to say, one, that my son, I recently spoke to a pilot. My son was flown up in a plane uh, as a birthday present from his uncle a couple of weeks ago. So I was mm-hmm. in, at an airport. I spoke to a pilot, mm-hmm. piloty things we talked to. I also, uh, three nights ago, had dinner with a former na- Navy pilot who went to Top Gun school, who flew the cool kind of planes mm-hmm. in the actual movie Top Gun, right? who knows his stuff. So I think that gives me some authority on the okay. matter. And I think he would agree with me when I say this. Mm-hmm. You're an expert. You... That these pilots mm-hmm. need to be court-martialed. And why is that? Especially the last one. Um, To, like, debrief them all under oath or whatever? I mean, like, what? what do you mean? I don't know what you mean, no. court-martialed. I, that means they should be uh, booted out of the military and prosecuted. For what? You've got the thing in front of you. The last plane had the thing locked in front of him what do you do shoot it of course you shoot it <laughs> what would that do empty the gun on him empty everything on him throw everything at this bastard that wouldn't do anything yes it would alice because if it hits it and it blows it up or it knocks it into the sea then we can study the damn thing and in and, and drag the selectorians out of the thing the lizard people and, and work shot. on them and use their serum to make a super strong you think a thing that can vanish and well, then reappear 60 miles away well, minutes later is like gonna that it's going to hang around to get shot at Well, I you? guess we'll never know because we didn't try it. <laughs> oh, wow, look at it right there. It's right there, isn't it? Did you see that, Bill? Yeah, wow, it still continues to be right there. Now oh, it's gone. Wow. Too bad we're not we don't, we're not sitting in something with the capability to stop something from moving forever. Huh. Yeah, well, let's just, just fly back to base. No, no, no. No. You shoot that bastard down. Every guy knows this. Every man, especially those who are Star Blazers fans, would know this. That you definitely, you got to knock one of these babies down. Well, they to, don't know. They're, if they're assuming at first that it's like some Chinese or Russian thing. Well, like, all they don't the better. Start... Sorry, guys. We didn't know. Plausible deniability is built in, Alice. You know this is the right thing to do. you got to shoot that down. We need that phone number. I need people to start calling in. Okay, to tell me I'm wrong all the time? Well, no. Yeah. Well, we're not <laughs> yes. streaming. We're not streaming well, but live no, In this also, case, of so... course you shoot it. Okay. You shoot it. You don't, you don't think so? 
I mean, I don't think it's going to do anything to shoot at it. You don't know that. You know nothing about this thing. Well, I think that it's probably, I mean, I personally think it's more likely to be supernatural than aliens, but that's my view. Well, maybe they'll kill that thing too. Are we not allowed to study anything? You know, you it's go to the Museum of Natural History, Alice. It's full of it. you go to the Museum of Natural History. It's full of animals that have been killed, so we can study them. We didn't just well, watch them and say, "Well, I can't really evaluate from here what it's made of. It's gone now." Well, yeah, but those things are part of our like actual experience. I don't think that you can. It's not going to do anything. You know why you say that, Alice? Mm -hmm. You know why you say that? Why do I say? Because that? you're one of them. You're a collectorian. <laughs> Everybody knows it. Thanks so much, guys. Um, you can give Tom your feedback that he wanted on the lines today on Twitter. He's Tom Shattuck. I'm Alice Shattuck. We're at Burn Barrel Pod. Uh, we're also on Facebook.com slash Burn Barrel Podcast. And we have a website, BurnBarrelPodcast.com. You can find us there or on our YouTube channel where we're Tom Shattuck's Burn Barrel. And you can also email us, uh, BurnBarrelPodcast at gmail.com. do is vaccine or masked.